Hi guys, we're just going to take a look today at one of our most popular selling roof racks, which is the Gutterless D1. We do four variants of it. So the first variant we do is the standard square steel bars. Then we do the Aero bar, which is the aluminium version. We also then do the aerodynamic bar, which is like the airplane wing, so it's shaped like an airplane wing. It's lower noise and easier on fuel on your car. Uh, with the steel bars, you get your standard clamps, you get the brackets, you get the wee bolts for going inside the bars, you take the screws and all keys, and if you decide to go for the D1 Plus, you get the caps to leave that the bolts aren't uh, accessible, so that is the security ones. With the, with the aerodynamic and the aero bars, the security locks are included. Uh, so it's only on the, on the steel bars, it's an extra. So we're going to take a look here. One thing just before I go ahead is in the instruction manual uh, with the, the aero bar and the aerodynamic bar, you have a secondary piece of plastic needed. So this is to, to leave that the bar, the round part of the bar is stays flat. It's not needed on the steel bar because the steel bar itself is actually flat. So it's just in the instruction. Sometimes we get people confused. It's only on the aerodynamic and the aero bar that that's needed. So just to start showing you what we're gonna do, this is on a um, Toyota Avensis. It's used for multiple vehicles, but on the roof line of this vehicle, there is no, um, no access points, no roof racks, no little gutters to unclip to bolt any brackets in. So this is what we call our gutterless roof rack. This is where the roof rack will sit on the roof and clamp over the door frame. Uh, so now we're just going to take and show you how to actually go about putting one of these together. So first part, part where we start, we're actually just going to take the end caps off. If you've got a little rubber mallet, this makes the job much easier. If the end caps is actually very, very stiff to take off, on the plastic ones, one of the things we find is if you get a bucket of hot water and just set them in it, it softens the plastic up and leaves them easier removed. Some of them will just pop, pop off where it's tight. That's where I find if you get the wee rubber mallet and just knock them off. And easier to pull off. That's it done. So first thing with your bracket you take and you mount your your bracket into the plate. Then you take the wee bracket that bolts through. You take your bolt from the inside it goes up through and then simply just tighten it. All you do is just get a couple of threads on to get it at the start because this part here actually goes up the inside of the bar. Then what we're going to do, we're going to take and feed it up the inside. So you'll see here where that actually just slides up the inner side of the channel. You see the bracket, now the plastic bracket sliding up the, the railway line and so forth. We're just going to turn it around upside down now. I'm going to tighten it up, not completely fully but just enough that the bracket holds in place. Simple, repeat that in all four corners and then now we're going to, I'm just going to jump that over onto the, the vehicle in a second. So, so here we're going to give you a couple of wee tips on how to fit the actual roof rack. Uh, on this vehicle you see we've now mounted to the roof, on the roof plate, with the bracket on the door and when you've this done now, you obviously go to the front of the vehicle, check that you have it evenly spread as much over on the right and that same on the left. Before you actually try and tighten this screw up, what you need to do, my advice and tips on how to do this, is push the actual bracket up to the door, hold the bracket up in place, close the door, now the bracket's in place, in here the little screw, fully tighten it. Now what you do, you tighten this up on tight. So it's hand tightened now. What happens is if you don't fully tighten this bracket up first, as you're trying to tighten this up to the door frame, the foot's trying to throw it full forward. So now we've completed the on both sides. What you may need to do for the foot plate to make sure it's resting on the roof, there's a little screw in here, it's a 10 mil bolt, and then it's a 13 mil bolt on the outer side here. Once you've it done, you can check that you make sure it's nice and even, it's not rocking back and forth. 
There's no movement in it at all. And then simply put on your end caps. Repeat, up. Repeat the process on the other side. Again, one of the things that I found out just from some people and things we've had in the past where people complain about, I would take a bucket of water and chuck a bucket of water over this to make sure there's no leaks through the rubber seals. If you do find that there's a leak in the rubber seal, what you may have to do is move the position a couple of centimeters forward or a couple of centimeters back and the same on the rear doors as well. Uh, just now when we, before we finish, we'll uh, take a look just to show you on the security lock first. Once you have the lock here, the locks come out separately. You turn the lock until like one of the wee tabs goes in. Push the lock in. Turn the lock around to hear it click. Once it's clicked, it's in place. Then you take the keys, the one that I've already done. <laughs> and we will now go over to the car and show you how to fit it. So there's actually a back plate for this. So the back plate simply, Slide in from the back, in place. You see the channel here where the, the lock goes on the front? That slides over, tidies the whole item up. Simply, that's it locked. Cannot get access to the locks, to the bolts to take the roof rack off. Again, nice and secure. This is the bit on the dearer versions of change where you've got the aluminium ones, just want to reiterate that. So there's the aluminium bar and that's the aerodynamic one. This is about a hundred and about a hundred pound to a hundred and nineteen pound depending on the length. And this one here again is about eighty nine pound to a hundred and nine pound depending on the length. Uh, there's about six variants of the roof rack apart from the four main variants where you've got the aluminium bars, the steel bars and with locks and without locks. But the main variant on it where it changes on this is the length of the bars. We do it in 100 centimeters, 110, 120, 130, 140, and then it jumps to 160. Um, what tools I recommend that you use for this will be a little rubber mallet, a 13 mil spanner, and a 10 mil spanner. That's literally all you need to do. And as I said, if you do have any problems in leakage on around the door, just move the roof rack back or move it forward accordingly. Um, again, it should be pretty secure with that. You can see now that's locking the vehicle. Just repeat the process in the back door, the job's done.